Log Talk Radio. Hi folks, it's Chris Daly. And as always, we come to you with great interesting things happening by Jamaicans making a difference in this world. And do we have a doozy for you? We have an interview with Roy Anderson, the great filmmaker. What happens when a filmmaker such as Roy Anderson gets together with a history professor like Harcourt Fuller and they decide to collaborate? What we get is an award-winning film that goes deep in, insight into Queen Nanny, that legendary Maroon chieftain. It's a documentary that examines these mysterious figures and will bring to light some of our attributes that you're not aware of. To do the interview, I have my partner, Janice, to do that. Janice, take it away. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, March is Women's History Month. So it was very appropriate to have the only female national hero for Jamaica. Um, We have a movie about her, and we have the director-producer, Roy Anderson. Roy, thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your Jamaican roots. (laughs) Well, as they would say, I was born in Yad, you know? (laughs) I'm a proud Mm -hmm. Jamaican. Awesome. Uh, I'm I'm actually a, a Independence baby, oh, so how okay. fitting, you know. I, w- I was born on the south coast of Jamaica uh, in Saint Elizabeth, uh-huh. and yeah. uh, my folks trekked over to Canada when I was very young, and I had no choice but I had to follow them. Very happy yeah. I did. Wow, that's good. And we're happy that you're here. You're a filmmaker. What motivated yeah. you to develop this career path? Um, I would really say that this is something that happened not by design. You know, I've, I'm, I've been already in the industry for a very long time, since 1981, as a stuntman and stunt coordinator and actor. And um, this thing about wanting to be a filmmaker is something that just materialized within the last, you know, eight or nine years or so. Mm. And, 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 and a lot of this is, is because of my um, curious nature. As I as I said earlier, I'm a proud Jamaican, and this curious thing came up, you know, came about as I uh, questioned a lot of family members about our roots, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the the first film that I did, A Quant of the Journey, was really born out of frustration of not, you know, getting the right answers from family members and so forth. So I had mm-hmm. to uh, dig even deeper, and then in the process of you know doing the research. You know, going to places like uh, you know the Mormon Church Family History Centers, and you know, finding about our our proud stock, uh, which is the Maroons. I decided that you know this wasn't going to be no little genealogy project, but a full blown um, treatment on the Maroons. And it, it was a very we we appreciate that because I don't know if there are any other movies about the Manny. Um, what uh, were you motivated? By um, any film person? Um, I, w- I would have to say definitely, definitely. You know, I've I've, I've been on movie sets with you know great directors. Uh, and, for, and for some of people, why don't you tell um, our audience some of the movies that you were a stunt person in? All right, um, I've been in um, Shaft. I worked on that. Um, Born Ultimatum, uh, mm-hmm. American Gangster, Dark uh, Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Worked on a bunch of you know. And you, you 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 have a um, a very strong resume. We just wanted the um, community to know a little taste of the Jamaican the Jamaican impact of, of such fine films. Yes. So, what do you hope to do with this tool to impact our community? Um, well, I, I think first and foremost, my my number one aim um, is to educate, and then that's along cool. the way, if I can inspire folks, mm-hmm. that's that's I mean that's a bonus. And of, of course, I try and you know go for the um, the entertainment value as well too. So yeah. you know, if, so if I can accomplish all three of those things, then um, I'd be a very very happy man. Hmm. Nanny has been around for a while. What drove the determination to give us insight on um, this great woman? Um, great question. Um, 
Manny really was an, an outgrowth of um, my first film. The first film that I did uh, came out in 2012 called A Quantum of the Journey. And um, this was, this was it, it started off, you know, the film started out as a unique personal journey for myself, but then morphed into a, a, a more significant history of the Maroons yeah. of Jamaica. And, of course, mm-hmm. you know, Nanny uh, was one of the heroes uh, yeah. in that struggle. And, and, and I for the talk- public, there, there are some, although some, we do have a Jamaican audience, there are some people who are not Jamaican, so they would like to know a little bit about Nanny. Who is Nanny and what did she accomplish? Why is she, why is she considered a national hero? Well, she is um, one of the leaders of, of one of the you know most successful um, slavery rebellion in mm-hmm. in not just Jamaica but in the New World, and she's mm-hmm. a trailblazer that came along before such luminaries as Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman and so forth. So mm-hmm. you have a, a a woman leading the men in the mountains of Jamaica, something that's totally foreign, you know, to the colonizers, to the British and and the Spanish. And so it was only fitting that, you know, she was named the national hero in 1976 for what she did. Yes, and and, and and that's important because if you look even in African history, like Queen Nzinga or Hetchabra yeah. or those other yeah. ones, because they are not used to that, they're not used to a matrilineal society, um, they're, tar- they're taken off guard and that's why they're yeah. able to be defeated. So maybe they need more women... <laughs> Leading the charge. The Maroons are very guarded with their culture for obvious yes. reasons. Um, how did you get access to such sacred ground? Well, I'm a Maroon myself, so oh. I, I, hopefully that counted for something. Okay. Well, that was <laughs> right. yeah, an access pass right there. I didn't know that. Right, but it's not, it wasn't that. It wasn't so easy, though. You know. Um, it, for, for, you know, I was even though I'm a maroon, I'm con- I, I may have been considered an abruni, as they would call it, or an outsider, right? Mm-hmm. But um, as as I was able to build up more and more trust, uh, they 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 opened up to me slowly, and they saw yeah. that um, the treatment that I uh, that I was going to give the culture uh, is, is one that would um, you know show the, the sensibilities of one that really appreciates. Um, you know, our our rich history. So for them, that was very important. I see. I remember when the the movie first started, uh, um, the guy was talking, and at first I thought, I'm thinking, is this popular? Is this, what what, what, which was that? I was just kind of thrown a bit. I mean, I recognize after a while he started talking in popular, but was that, was that uh, uh, a Ghanaian language, or what is that? No, it's, it's it's an esoteric language. And mm-hmm. it's called Cromanti. Cromanti, okay. Which is basically, um, I don't like to use the word bastardization, but it's a mix of the the, the Chi language, you know, mm-hmm. dialect from Ghana. Okay. With some English. Yeah. And with a Jamaican patois. Yeah, because I, I picked up the patois, but I was like, wait, he's speaking something else here. And thank God yeah. you, um, you had the foresight to put... <laughs> in the front, in the bottom of that, because nobody, I would, I would have, I'm Jamaican, and I, I had to start listening carefully. <laughs> to, um, well, the the the, the, the thing, thing is, if it was too recognizable, then uh, that wouldn't have worked against the British, you know, when they were fighting them back a few hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this is how they communicate amongst each other. Oh, okay. So that, that that's very interesting. I I know a lot of people can be appreciative of that, the Cromanti. And and just the accomplishment of the Maroons. Basically the British couldn't deal with them anymore so um they eventually had to make peace with the Maroons and have them do their own thing. Yes. And that that's yes. that's important. <laughs> that's yes. very important. Doing this type of work involves many folks resources. How did you fund this endeavor? Um, this um, project, like the first one, was, was self-funded. Um, mm-hmm. This this second one, I was thankful to have um, some people take some of the load off my back a little bit. You know, um, Professor Fuller um, contributed, um, you know, not only financially, but um, his time 
and efforts and, and his uh, expertise as a scholar. Um, you know, we were able to get assistance from, from the Jamaican Defense Force. So okay. they provided to us a helicopter when we were, uh, well, at least use of the, the helicopter. Overhead the overhead yes, shots? Yes, for the overhead shots, and also that allowed us to bring an equipment, you know, into the mountains oh, that's and, and right. personnel. Oh, yeah. And then it's we 2000 an hour to rent a helicopter. Yeah, I can imagine. But I'm just saying, um, you know, I never even thought of that logistical thing to, to actually bring the equipment because... Uh, that's a hike if you had to do that. <laughs> well, well, let me I tell you something. would have made it. Well, let me tell you something. This was a filmed expedition, so uh, it was uh, it consisted of about 35 people, and the mm. only ones lucky enough to go up in the helicopter was about, you know, three or four of us, you know, myself, my director of photography, um, mm-hmm. and, and we basically had my wife, who also is a co-producer on the film, she led the folks on the ground on a... On a um, a 12-mile trek through the woods, and that literally was lasted all day. Yeah, all I day. Can I can, I, you know, and in the film, I was just curious. They have, it seems like all of them had, like, um, like stuff wrapped around them. Was that, like, insect repellent, or is that just to get one with the nature? Why did everybody have those things wrapped around them? The, I'm, like glad the you, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I mean, that, that bush is very important. Um, to the Maroons, it's called a cocoon bush, mm-hmm. and and so basically, if you wrap enough of that around your body, it camouflages you. So this is what they were able to use uh, when they went into battle against, you know, the you know the soldiers, the British soldiers and the Spanish soldiers, who are who are um, coming to the hills to capture them. So they're able to disguise themselves and blend in with the environment. Oh wow! And then you you notice like say in modern warfare, sometimes when you yes. see those go army or something, you see them all dressed up in that that camouflage stuff. So exactly, this, um, exactly. That's like a long history of that. I I I, I couldn't think. And at first I'm thinking, well, maybe it's insect re- insect repellent, <laughs> you know, right. and then you put it on it to to keep the bugs off. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what was going. on. There, you know, I can so suggest and to ensure that you produce a high quality film like this. Um, pardon me, I didn't hear that question. Well, okay. Um, how can folks ensure that we produce more of these? This is this is this is good work. This is excellent Thank you. work. And Thank we you. need more of this caliber of films as opposed to some of the other questionable. <laughs> That I will not be interviewing the director on. They, they know, shall remain nameless. <laughs> they should be erased from the delete button. It's <laughs> what they should be. But you know, yes. how can we get more people to invest in this. Well, what would you like the community or the public listening to um, to get more of this type of film being produced? Well, I think number one, it starts with um, the, the you know the the filmmaker and mm-hmm. and his team really appreciating the subject matter. You have to you have to have a, a, a profound appreciation for the story that you want to tell. It's mm-hmm. it's only then that I think you can really do it justice. And you know, for me, it's a no brainer. I'm a maroon, so I'm going to make sure that the story that I I, I put out is is it's um it, it's it's in the best light. But number one. In the film, you know, I tell people that I'm not, you know, I'm not setting out to do a propaganda piece. I'm mm-hmm. trying to be as balanced and objective as possible. Because, it, uh, go ahead. It's so important that you tell your own story. Um, whether it is. And, and I see this over and over again. Because you see movies um, made about, say, black American culture or or African cultures. And, you, and, and, and they're not... They're not black Americans making it, or they're not Africans. And so the authenticity isn't there. And it's also, there might be some sort of hidden agenda. What do you really want to say? You know? Or okay. somebody pirates your culture. Like, right now, um, I don't know if it came out yet, but we were God of Egypt. And we're all white people. And you, right. <laughs> if you are not a reading person, 
you are yeah. going to believe it. And when you say, you know, this is a flat out lie, they keep doing it, God's of Egypt, Prince of Egypt, it goes on and on and on. How can you tell me that it's white people when all the hieroglyphics and all the things involve brown people? <laughs> I mean, you may have one or two clear skinned people, but they're all brown. They all have African features. Some of them have dreadlocks, but right. they want you to they want you to believe something else. So I'm just saying that to bring I'm bringing it back to to your um, documentary. It's important uh-huh. to tell your own story because if somebody else tells your story, they may have a hidden agenda, um, which is not which may not be to your benefit. Um, well, what you, you know that old African proverb that the the tale of the hunt always glorify the hunter. Oh, quite true. So uh, un, until the lion can really tell his story, that's the only time that it's going to do it really true justice. Mm-hmm. Very, very and, true. And and the and, and the thing is, what I often say to people is, um, the story that I tell. Um, it may not necessarily, you know, I, I'm not the be-all that I know of, of, of maroon history. Mm-hmm. But what I bring to the table is, is the sensibility. And, and, mm-hmm. I, and I bring a, a very specific lens that's not clouded. Mm. So right? what has, yeah, quite true. And, and so what has been the response to the showing to date? Oh, it, the response has been just... Overwhelming, you know. When we um, world premiered the film at the United Nations um, last October, uh, we had almost 600 people in the audience. Mm. That was the wow. first time that I, uh, you know, an event like that had so much uh, participation from the community. Because usually, a lot of those events at the UN are are in-house, you know, guests of um, uh, of the ambassadors, the diplomats, and so forth. But the community was really, really engaged. And then the following night. We screen it um, at the Schomburg um, uh, Research Center in Harlem. And again, mm. you know, this was standing room only. Yeah. This was that's that's awesome. the second showing. So um, I, I, uh, I, I, didn't really, I, I really didn't know what to say. Well, it's good that the, <laughs> it's approved, and we respect you and appreciate you for doing that. So we're happy Thank for you. So how Thank can you. folks uh, gain access you, um, to your fine, fine work? Well, the unfortunate thing is um, Queen Nanny just came out, so the DVD is not available as yet. We're hoping, hoping, fingers crossed, that maybe t- early summer the DVD might be out. So right now what we're doing is we're doing special screenings, um, UN screenings, uh, film festivals, some community screenings. You know, folks who want to host a, a screening of uh, of Queen Nanny, even though it's not released, they can always um, contact us through our um, our Facebook page, mm-hmm. and 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 we can arrange for them. You know, the groups or individuals to host a screening uh, of the film. Mm-hmm. And you know, what? just to let you know that um, you know we have a, a unique relationship with the United Nations right now through one of their um, their agency, the Department of Public Information. You know, they were just so blown away with Queen Nanny that they approached us to to make the film available um, to screen at some of their information centers around the world. And this is uh, this was being, being done in honor of um, Slavery Remembrance Day, which is um, celebrated every March 25th. Yeah, I, um, what the, I I remember Portia Simpson, the former prime minister. Um, yes. Was it last year that they had a um, a memorial or? A, or yes. A, yes, they unveiled a permanent uh, memorial to slavery uh, at yeah. United Na- on the grounds of the UN. Right, right. I remember something like that. Yeah. And I can tell you that uh, leading that effort is the ambassador, uh, the Jamaican ambassador to the UN. Awesome. See, we're yeah. we're always trailblazers. If you notice that, you know, there's only what two million of us on the island, and maybe two Not million. Too many. Us. So for for, if you think about it, proportion wise, we brought music, athleticism. Yes. We tend to yes. accelerate, <laughs> and we've just given the opportunity. We accelerate in so many levels; it's unbelievable. So yes. what can so what can we expect next from Anthony? Oh, you didn't want me to spill the beans that early, do you? 
<laughs> no, no, okay. Well, you know what? We're going to hold that for the next interview we have with you. And we know I can give you a quick tease. I, I, two words. Marcus Garvey. Awesome. You know that you've just wet our um, taste buds for some more and more and more. So give yes. us some uh, final thoughts. Any final thoughts to share out there? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, uh, 11 countries in the African continent will be able to see Queen Nanny in three weeks. Um, yes. And I think, you know, I think as they look on and see the work that's happening in the diaspora, that there really is that continuity between Africa and the Americas. And, and, mm-hmm. and really and truly, I mean, that's, that's my aim with telling these stories, mm-hmm. is, is to show that continuity that no, um, you know, slavery may have beaten us down, but in the end, we, we have won because our people have maintained the culture 300, That's 400 true. years later. They tried to beat it out of us, but the spirits, the African spirits rise and continue to rise. So, <clears throat> to learn more about Chris Daly, visit Digital to Grow Media. To learn more about Jamaican Diaspora, visit JamaicanDiaspora.com. And if you want to to learn do the um do any private screenings, contact Roy Anderson in any way, visit his Facebook site at Nanny Facebook, Nanny the Movie. It has been a pleasure talking to you. This was a wonderful example of Women's History Month and we really appreciate you. So we'll talk to you soon and thanks for Thank spending you. some time with us. Bye You're now. Welcome.